Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. In this second Wikispaces classroom tutorial, I'll be showing you how to edit the look and feel of your wiki and showing you how to use the bulk user creator to create accounts for your students. First we need to click on the settings option on the top right and then scroll down to the themes and colours option at the bottom of the list on the left hand side of the page. Once on the themes and colours page, it is a pretty simple process to choose the colours you want to make for your wiki. I can either choose from a limited range of predefined colours or click on the preview and customise option to tweak the colours to suit my exact requirements. I'm going to click on the preview and customise option. The colour wheel has two sliders. The slider on the outside selects the colour I want to use. The slider on the square alters the shade of that outer colour from dark to light. To get my exact colour, I have to move both sliders to the value I want. To change the colour of each element, I have to click the individual colour bar to the left of the wheel. Once I'm happy with my new theme, I press the Apply button. I now want to use the User Creator option. I'm still on the Settings page, and to start the process, I click on the User Creator link. It's a four-stage process to create users using this tool. First, I have to select the wiki I wish to create users for. If you only have one wiki, you will only see one option. I manage many wikis, so I need to make sure I select the appropriate one. Next, I have to elect how I'm going to enter my usernames and passwords onto the wiki. I've already prepared in advance an Excel spreadsheet of my class usernames and passwords. I created this simply using the concatenate formula in Excel. I've already created a tutorial on this, and you can click on the link to the tutorial if you need to learn this. Now that I have selected my Excel file, I can upload it to Wikispaces by clicking on the Upload button. The file uploads quickly and Wikispaces next asks me if it has to ignore the first row of data. If you have used a header row in your spreadsheet, click Yes. I have not. Next, I need to identify the columns that have usernames and passwords in it. When I have done this, I then click on the Continue button and Wikispaces starts the creation process. Next, Wikispaces asks me to verify the accounts and to make changes to the accounts that have errors in them. As you can see here, one of my student usernames is a duplicate, therefore I need to edit it. All the other usernames are fine. To make the change to the single duplicate username, I need to click on the back button. One page back, we can see that Wikispaces has a text list of the usernames. I just need to find the username Olivia and make some changes to avoid the duplication issue. It is important to make a note of any of the changes that you make to a username, as it will be unique amongst the entire class. I now click the Continue button twice, once on this screen and again on the next screen, and Wikispaces will verify my changes. This time there are no errors, and now I can continue through the process by clicking Continue again. On this final page of the four-stage process, Wikispaces user creator confirms that all of my students have been created as members for this wiki alone. As members of the wiki, students have the right to create and edit content, but they do not have the right to delete pages or files. This makes Wikispaces a great place for students to collaborate and for teachers to be relaxed about malicious or accidental deletion of content. Now that I have created my student accounts, I can now go back and assign students to their project teams. Using the projects link on the top of the page, I get back to my projects. In my haste, I named my first project Ecology Group 1. I want to change this. To edit a project's name, I click on the grey arrow to the right of the project name, and I can click on this and select the Rename Project option. With my project renamed, I can now create project teams and finally assign students to teams. On the projects page, I click on the project name to open it up and click on the Add Teams button. A pop-up screen prompts me to make a choice. As we've already used the user creator, I'm just going to select the top option and click on the Create Teams button. Here on this new pop-up page, I can either accept the Team 123 option or give my teams names by clicking in each box and writing team names. I imagine your students will want to be known by more imaginative names than my group 1, group 2, etc. And if I wanted to add more teams to the project, I could click on the Add a Team button to create more. But I'm happy with my three teams, and finally click on the Create Teams button. 
It is here that we finally get to assign students to their respective teams. Here you can see a list of students and a list of project teams. To assign students to a team, all I have to do is to tick the relevant students and then click and drag these blue highlighted names to the relevant team group. You will note that once students have been assigned to a team, they drop off from the list. I can continue to assign students to teams without fear of putting a student into a group twice. Within each group you can see that there are three icons. One for group members, one for specific group events and the privacy status of the group, which provides me as a teacher a great overview of each team. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great free e-learning tutorials and don't forget to let your colleagues know about these tutorials too. So, until the next tutorial, keep practicing! <laughs>